All right, welcome. So we're gonna do uh, chapter three, exercise assignment help video. Today, this is for principles of financial accounting and I'm Mr. Bell, welcome. Okay, so the very beginning problem uh, that we're gonna do on this exercise is gonna, th they list out these different transaction descriptions or adjusting entry descriptions because we're doing adjusting entries in this chapter. And so what we're going to have here is we're going to have a bunch of descriptions of possible adjustments. And then there's a list that of actual journal entries, debit credit, right? Uh, it, and then we're going to have to match up these here with that list. And so let's go ahead and, and talk through these really quick and exactly what they're going to be and, and what it's going to look like. And so we'll go ahead and hop back and forth here between these two. So this is the list. And so we'll just go down through the list here really quick. So these are adjusting entries. So A here, to record the period's depreciation expense. So at the end of the period, it could be the, a month or a quarter or a year, you're going to do a depreciation uh, adjustment. So you're gonna record depreciation for a piece of equipment or a building or something like that. And so that's going to be one possible one. So let's go ahead and go find that one here on our list. So this is depreciation. That one's pretty easy to find. We're just looking for the word depreciation here. And sure enough, there we go. We found it. So it's going to be down here. For depreciation expenses, one important thing to note is we are going to, of course, we're going to have our depreciation expense and then we are gonna have accumulated depreciation. So this adjustment adjusts an expense account and then it adjusts an, uh, what's called a contra asset or an asset account, uh, account that's gonna be in the asset column. So this is gonna be the normal format for these adjusting entries are you're going to have a, an expense or a revenue. So that's gonna be one side of the entry. And then for the other side of the entry, you're going to have an asset or a liability. And so that's gonna be one or the other. So, so these are gonna be combined. So, so this one, for example, this depreciation one is gonna be uh, the, uh, it's gonna be an expense and an asset, or in this case, a contra asset, right? So those are gonna be tied together as the accounts that, are, that we're gonna be doing an entry for. Okay, let's, let's flip back here back and forth here, uh, to record accrued salaries expense. So again, we're gonna be looking for salaries. And we see, of course, right up at the top, this is gonna be, this is gonna be that one right there. Let's go ahead, instead of flipping back and forth, let's just go down through these and just talk about what's, what's happening here. So this is, this next one down here, this is a prepaid that we're now saying, okay, we've used some of our prepaid insurance or it has expired. That's what happens with insurance is just time passes, right? It doesn't matter if we have an accident or anything. We're not doing a, 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 the, an adjusting entry for that. Uh, we are doing an adjusting entry for the insurance policy that we paid for and it just timing out over time. So that's that second one there. Uh, interest rev receivable here and interest revenue, this is gonna be some interest that has accrued over time that we are going to get paid. So we are going to get this, get money for this interest. We haven't collected it yet though, right? So we have this receivable, we haven't collected the money, but we can count the revenue because we earned it, time passed. Uh, next one down here, cash and unearned revenue. So this is gonna be under in revenue is going to be, um, well, this is this is us receiving cash uh, that's not ours yet. We haven't earned it yet. So we're recording the cash because we received it. It's in our possession, but we haven't earned it yet. So that liability for under in revenue is going to be recorded at the same time. Okay, so this is for this is for under in revenue. That's the receipt of the cash. This one here, accounts payable. This one's going to be. Uh, we're paying cash, so we're paying cash here for a some type of liability that we had. So whatever liability that we had, uh, we're now paying it off. That's that one right there. Next one down here is we're collecting cash uh, for an accounts receivable for for services. So this one was a receivable. We already recorded the revenue for it. 
we're now just receiving the cash for it. So we, we, um, that's a good thing. We like cash. We want cash, and so we are now receiving cash for, for services that we already recorded the revenue for, and we had a receivable that we, we collected on. So this is interest expense. This one is, uh, interest that we have to pay. We have not paid it yet. But time has passed and we owe someone interest. So this is the interest expense. that uh, That's incurred expense, right? So we are not paying cash yet, but we do have a payable on the book. So we'll, we will have to pay that eventually um, when it's due. We have unearned professional fees and professional fees earned. This is an unearned revenue that we have now earned. So we've actually provided the professional fees. We've we've done the work and so that means that we can turn our unearned our unearned is going to be our debit so that's going to reduce the liability and we're going to turn that unearned into revenue so this one on the bottom professional fees earned is a revenue account and we've earned it uh, this last one let's talk about this prepaid rent in cash we're paying cash uh, and uh, we are getting what we're getting for it. We're not paying current rent. We're paying for a future rent. So that's our prepaid rent right there. That we are. Um, that's an asset. A prepaid is an asset, and so that's going to be our entry with that one. Okay. Moving on to problem number two. Uh, it says Pablo Management has ten employees, each of whom earns one hundred and ten dollars per day. Uh, they are normally paid on Fridays for work completed uh, through Monday, uh, Monday through Friday, right, uh, of the same week. Near year-end, 10 employees worked Monday, December 31st, and Wednesday uh, through Friday, January 2nd, and 3rd, and 4th, right? Wednesday, Wednesday through Friday, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. So they're working all these days. New Year's Day was an unpaid holiday. We're preparing the year-end adjusting entry for wages expense, and we're recording the payment of those wages eventually on January 4th. So this is, this is how it's going to turn out. So, this is, so we've got December here. So the way I like to draw this one out to, to recognize is we've got December uh, 31st. We've got January... Uh, first and then we've got January 2nd 3rd and 4th so fourth right here the fourth is payday this right here is payday right payday and uh, so that's the fourth this is a day that was worked right here the 31st is a day that was worked uh, in the prior year so that's what we have to do the adjusting entry for for year end. And we're actually going to make that entry. Typically, people will make that entry later on because we just got to divide it up so our financials are, are correctly um, uh, representing the, the, well, the actual uh, expense from payroll and what actually happened. So we're going to make sure our numbers are presented fairly. And so in order to do that, we're drawing a line right here. Boom, 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 boom. Right, and we're saying we have to do an adjusting entry for this. So that's going to be our adjusting entry. And then, and then we're going to pay off uh, this whole week. So from December 31st through 4th on the 4th. So the adjusting entry looks like this. So at the very beginning, we have to be able to say there is some payroll expense. Or it, it could be salaries expense or wages expense, whatever you're going to be using. But it's going to be an expense that we're going to have, right? So that is going to be the debit. See, so that's going to be the debit. DR for debit there. Uh, it's kind of strange. They, they use DR for debit. It's not DB. So it's DR for debit, CR for credit uh, on here. So this is for accounting. Uh, the amount is going to be... That's the total for one day of work for these employees. So that, that's going to be it. Your numbers might be a little different, but that's the basic idea there. And so we're going to have a debit for $1,100. And then we're going to have a credit here for uh, our payroll payable. 
it could be payroll, it could be salaries payable, whatever the, the account is that's set up there, but it's going to be a payable. We're not paying it. We didn't pay it at year end. We're actually paying it on the Friday, which is a Friday after December 31st, right? Same week. Um, so that's going to happen there. And again, that's going to be a credit 1,100. Okay, so there we are. So now January 1st is going to be January 1st is an unpaid holiday, so we don't need to worry about January 1st. January 2nd is going to be another $1,100 day. January 3rd, again, another $1,100 day. And January 4th will be another $1,100 day. So these three right here, after the into the new year, into January, that's going to be $3,300 that we've got to pay. Plus, we know we also have to pay this $1,100 payable that we're going to have to do. So on payroll, we're going to pay that that we owed on December 31st that we recorded an adjustment for. We're also going to pay the rest of the week. This is on December or January 4th, right? So on January 4th, we're going to uh, debit uh, more payroll expense whatever your account is, it could be salaries expense or wages expense, whatever you call this specifically, it's gonna be an expense account. Okay, so that's gonna be one of our debits. Okay, and we're gonna put debit up here, right? Debit and credit. Okay, so that's gonna be one of our debits and that'll be for the uh, expense that we haven't recorded yet because we have recorded the expense for December 31st, payroll, payroll expense, we haven't recorded three thousand three hundred dollars worth of salaries expense from january 2nd 3rd and 4th right so we'll, we'll record that we're also going to debit the uh, payroll payable and again this account could be salaries payable or wages payable whatever name it's going to be for you and that's going to be for december 31st amount so here we have debit two debits they add up to four thousand four hundred dollars and so that means to balance things out, $4,400 needs to be our credit, and that one is going to be cash. So we're going to actually pay that out. That'll be payday, right? That's the great thing about payday is employees get cash, right? So that's part of it. We're paying them out. We're writing checks. We're, you know, we're writing those paychecks out. And so that's going to be our debit or our credit, I should say, to cash. So that's the entry there for problem two. So problem three, April 1st, the company hired an attorney for a flat fee of 500 bucks. Uh, payment for April legal fees was made by the company on May 12th. The, the first journal entry that we're gonna have is on April 1st, the company hired an attorney for a flat fee of $500. They're gonna make their payment for the legal services later in, in May is what, what's gonna happen there. No transaction is going to happen yet there's no work done there is no cash that has changed hands right so the company hired hired them and they're going to pay them later the legal services will take place if they actually did legal services for us right if they actually did something for us then that's going to be um our legal services expense right we're going to have a we're going to have an expense for that that will be our debit. And then we're gonna have a um, legal services payable. Got to spell right there. And so that would be if they actually do some services for us, that's gonna be look like that. When we finally pay it off, it's gonna be, uh, we're gonna pay, we're gonna pay off the payable. The payable is gonna be our debit. And then our cash, of course, is gonna be, there we go. And our cash is gonna be our credit on that one. So on B, B is interest expense has accrued on a note payable, full interest payment of $2,663 on note is due on May 20th. So on April 30th, what we're gonna do here is we are gonna have uh, our interest, we're not receiving this, we're gonna pay it. And so we're gonna have uh, interest, 
expense, that'll be for $888. And then we're gonna have a uh, interest payable for $888 as well. So that's, oops, there we go. So that's our debit, that's our credit. And then come May 20th, what's gonna happen is, kind of like the payroll thing, what happens is we are going to uh, be paying off uh, all of the interest okay so we're gonna we're gonna have some uh, we're gonna have this payable we're gonna be paying off that's gonna be paid off here and so that's gonna be we've got our debits and our credits here that's gonna be a debit so we credit it as a payable and as we pay it off we're gonna reduce the payable we're gonna pay it off we're also gonna have some more expense going on here so this is gonna be like interest expense or whatever and that's gonna be for the remainder of the interest that we're paying for. So for this $2,663, we've already got some of it separated out for April, $888. So that means that we have left over uh, to expense basically in May, we're gonna have $1,775 left. That's going to total up for us. That'll total up to 2,663 is what that's going to total up for. And so, uh, but, and that's going to be a credit and it'll be a credit to cash. So we're actually going to pay it off. That'll happen. Everything on the left is our adjusting entry at the end of April 30th. Everything on the right is our uh, payment for that when it finally happens. Okay, now going to C here, we're gonna do C. It says total weekly salaries expense for all employees is $11,000. This amount is paid at the end of the day on Friday of each five day work week. April 30th falls on a Tuesday, which means that the employees have worked two days since the last payday. Uh, the next payday is May 3rd. So again, this is almost just like number one. We're gonna divide it up. We're gonna say April 29th, and 30th are in one month and we're gonna we're gonna say okay that's our adjusted entry to the left to the right we're gonna have may the three days left right is gonna be in may so may first second and third and we're gonna divide up eleven thousand dollars between all of them so that's for the whole week is what's gonna happen there divided by five, right? 11,000 divided by five. So that's 2,000, that's $2,200 per day is the way that's gonna work. $2,200 per day. And then it's gonna take on the same thing, like just like we did above, we're gonna do with our adjusting entry, we're gonna expense it, we're gonna have a payable as of April 30th for that $4,400 in April. Then when we get to May 3rd, we're gonna go ahead and pay that payable off as a debit. We're gonna expense the rest of the 660 bucks, which is May's uh, salary expense, or wages expense, whatever your, the account is that you get to pick. And then it's cash. Cash is the credit for 11,000 bucks. So that's what's gonna happen there. Okay, problem number four. Depreciation on the company's equipment for the year is computed to be $15,000. So these are gonna be uh, each uh, their own little adjusting entry. We're doing a lot of adjusting entries here. The main thing is we just, uh, you know, as we do some, uh, there's different types, and then as we do some, we're just gonna start getting familiar with what an adjusting entry looks like, what the different types are, and it'll help us out. So this is, we're gonna start with A. So A here is a pretty easy one, depreciation course we're going to start out with depreciation expense as our debit so expenses are debits so that's just something important to get out there uh, and that's 15,000 <clears> and then with depreciation expense the way it works is that's where accumulated depreciation in, comes in so that's our special account we talked about that a little bit before that's accumulated depreciation that one is gonna be what's called a contra asset. And so it's gonna catch all of the depreciation and it's gonna hold it 
uh, contra to or opposite of the actual asset we're depreciating. Together, the asset we're depreciating, right, whatever its value is, minus the accumulated depreciation is going to give us what's called book value, right? So it'll, the, the accumulated depreciation, as it continues to accumulate more and more, uh, then that book value will drop. And so uh, it'll keep going down as the depreciation keeps happening. Book value, or um, yeah, it's going to be our uh, it's going to be our value that we're going to be holding that asset as uh, net of depreciation. B here, the next one we're going to have a prepaid insurance account. It's going to have eight thousand dollar debit. Prepaids are assets, so that's normal balance is the debit balance. Um, before the adjusting cost of an expired amount. So as we look at it, we see that $1,860 is unexpired. So everything else expired. So we're gonna adjust out the expired amount. So this $1,860 is not our number. We don't wanna use that number, but we're gonna use that number to get the right one. So we're gonna have $8,000 minus the 1860 and so that's going to give us $6,140. For B, that's going to be our insurance expense. Because again, we don't expense our insurance as we pay for the policy. We expense it as time passes. Because insurance policies are good for a certain amount of time. And so then that's going to be our, <clears throat> our prepaid insurance will be the credit prepaid insurance and that's our our asset that's going to get the credit so that's how much expired of our uh, prepaid insurance that's 6140 on there so so that's going to be our prepaid adjustment how much we used up or how much was expired see the office supplies account had 570 dollars debit balance so we're this one's a this one's a supplies account issue so the way we are going to use here what we're going to do when we do supplies or any inventory is really uh, as we take inventory we go and count things we want our balance to be the balance that we actually have in inventory and so sometimes the book number or what's on our accounting records doesn't match what's actually out there in our supplies room or our supplies closet or whatever we have for inventory so we got to match it up so we're going to do some numbers here real quick and we're going to say okay <clears throat> the uh let's see that's going to be 570 dollars uh, balance at the beginning of december we're going to buy two thousand six hundred eighty dollars of office supplies were purchased so one way to look at this is kind of like a t account so this is our supplies account here. And there is an I. There we go. And so we're starting off with a $570 balance. We're going to add to it. So the way we add to balances is going to be on the same side, right? So if we're just going to keep adding, we're going to add, we're going to buy some more stuff for $2,680. And then uh, that will be our balance currently, right? So if we add our beginning balance, our $570, and we add the $2,680 of purchases, so that's going to be $3,250. And so if we didn't use any of our supplies, that's how much we would have in our supplies closet. But instead, what, what happens is it says we're, we go and do a physical count, and we see that we only have uh, $673 worth of supplies in there. We don't have this 3,250. So the balance we actually want in there, we actually want the uh, 6,073 to be our balance. Okay, but we can't just magically just say, okay, that's gonna be our balance, right? We have to get there. We have to make this number, 3,250 become Right, this number right here, we want it to become this number. So how do we do that? Well, we've got to put a number over here. This is our adjusting number, right? 
so that we've got to adjust it. So uh, the difference or the adjustment is going to be the 3,250 minus the 673 is going to mean that we're going to have to adjust by 2,577, which in, in, in this case, because we're doing supplies here, that's actually how the dollar amount of supplies that, that we use, that's what it is, right? So that's, that adjustment is the supplies that left our supply closet. So that means that uh, the entry is going to be, uh, we're going to have supplies expense here. We don't expense the supplies when we buy them, we expense them as we use them. So the debit to supplies expense is going to be 2577 There we go. And then our credit is going to be to the actual supplies account, right? This is a credit. This is on the credit side of the account right here. So our supplies, our credit's going to be 2,577. 2,577. There we go. And so that's the debit and credit there. That's the credit on this side. That's going to be to supplies. So that'll be for for C there. That's what we're going to be doing. Okay, we're going to continue on here. We'll just we'll just continue on on this side of the page. So that our D here, our D is going to be so one fifth of the work related to ten thousand dollars of cash received on advance was performed this period. Okay, so one fifth of the work. So so the the way that works is we had an unearned revenue. So we got an advance. They paid us ten thousand bucks up front. And they said, hey, do this work. We did one-fifth of it. And so 20% of it, right? So we did that. And so we need to count that as revenue now. So the way we're going to count that as revenue is we are going to debit unearned revenue. We're going to debit that for uh, for 20%. So it'll, that'll be $2,000. That's pretty easy math. 20% of 10000 And then uh, we are going to... Uh, count that as uh, whatever revenue we have. So our, for example, we could say um, uh, services earned or whatever whatever that revenue account in count is. So we, we can say uh, or services revenue, whatever that is. Services revenue, revenue accounts have different names. It could be sales. It could be whatever earned. It could be what it, you know. Uh, it could actually have the word revenue in it. And that would be for the $2,000 credit. So the revenue, our revenue account is going to be credited. So that will be D. E is going to be prepaid rent account add a $5,100 debit balance. So that's our asset is sitting there. Uh, we prepaid it. And then we look at our rent and we say, oh, it looks like that uh, 3240 of the rental Coverage has expired, so we kind of used it up. Time passed, basically, right? So in that case, we're going to do our rent expense. So we expense our rent uh, as time passes. If we prepay our rent, then as soon as that prepaid time passes, that we paid for passes, then we've got to uh, adjust it. So our rent there, that's $3, 3240 Prepaid rent will be whoop, will be credited, right? So for, so for three thousand two forty six, and your numbers might be a little different than mine, but that's kind of the same idea. You can see where I'm getting them. Uh, last one here: wages expense of a thousand of thousand dollars have been incurred, but have not been paid as of December thirty first. So we've already kind of done a couple of these. Um, so these are this is what's called an accrued expense. So we uh, incurred the expense, but we haven't paid for it yet. And so we have our wage, this is for F here. So this is gonna be important. This is gonna be our wage expense, because it actually happened, so we gotta expense it. That's gonna be our debit. Expenses are debits, so that's for a thousand bucks. And then our credit is gonna be wages payable, and that's gonna be our credit. Uh, we will pay it off. When are we gonna pay it off? Well, it'll be payday right is when we're going to pay that off so that'll happen in payday so that's problem number four hope that helps thanks
Problem number five. So this is gonna be problem number five here. So wages are gonna be earned but not paid. So this is exactly what we did on our last one on F, right? So so A is gonna be pretty easy. It's just gonna be like the other one that we, the other ones that we did. And so it's gonna be our wage expense debit for six thousand. And then we're gonna have our wage payable for that's going to be a credit that'll be six thousand there we go so that's that one um our b here let's do our b uh, depreciation so we've kind of done this before as well a little bit so that'll that'll help us out uh i'm just going to look for one that we haven't done so we've done depreciation we know that one we, we did an office supplies account we've done one just like that so we know that uh prepaid insurance we've done one just like that uh, company earned interest revenue we've done interest as well right so we've done that before and then the company has a bank loan that it's incurred interest expense uh, so we've done interest on that so I'm, I'm gonna leave number five you guys if you have any questions on that let me know those are some that I've already just done right so we, we um, that shouldn't be a problem for you uh, just look back at those past problems and and it'll give you the debits and credits and and those are pretty straightforward there okay so this one right here this is an interesting problem that we're doing here so what this one uh, is is it gives us the unadjusted balance and then it gives us the adjusted balance so this is like a trial balance so as part of our accounting process we do all of our original entries and everything and that tells us at the end of the month before we do adjustments that's the unadjusted balance once we do our adjustments then it changes the adjusted balances some of them not all of them but it changes it to the adjusted balance so that when we issue our adjusted trial balance uh, a lot of the balances are updated and new and and they're adjusted so they're um, they're in compliance with gap and and we've got our financials set to to be able to be represented fairly for everything that we've done so we need to do that we need to have adjusted financials and so the, what we're going to do is we're going to look through here and we're going to just uh, note the ones that are different. So it looks like we got a difference here in fees earned. We do not have a difference in commissions earned. So total revenues are changed. We have depreciation expense. There's a difference there. Depreciation expense, difference there. Salaries expense, we do have a difference. Insurance expense, yep, there is a difference there. Um, we've got no difference in rent expense. That's not a deal. Office supplies expense, there is a difference. Advertising, not to worry about that. Utilities expense, yes, we have a difference there. So all of these that have the difference, the line across here, we're gonna be doing, or we have done, to get from one end to the other, we have done a adjusting entry. So you've gotta think about, well, what adjusting entry, what would that look like, that adjusting entry? Well, for sure, each of these accounts are going to be one side of that entry so for example fees earned we know for fees earned to go up so this is a revenue account and revenues to go up we know that that has to be credited so this is going to be the credit side of whatever adjusting entry we have what kind of adjusting entry do we have where we need where we increase our revenues well uh, so there's there's a couple of them one is we have um, a, an entry where maybe we uh, didn't actually record any revenue. That's called an accrued revenue entry. So we're gonna, we could have an accounts receivable, debit, and a fees earned credit. So that could be a possibility is right there. We could also, we've also done some unearned revenue adjustments. And so we could have maybe, we could have a debit for an unearned revenue and a credit for a f uh, fees earned, stuff like that, right? So that's gonna be a, a matchup for that one. Let's go down to the next one, the depreciation. We'll take both of these. So they're gonna be a separate entries, but with each of these, they're gonna have their accumulated depreciation accounts attached to them, right? These expenses, all these expenses are gonna be debits, right? Every expense account is gonna be a debit on the adjusting entry. The credit for these depreciation ones will be, we're gonna credit their accumulated depreciation accounts. Salaries expense, most likely on this one, so this one's gonna be a debit, 
the credit on this one will be salaries payable most likely uh, insurance expense uh, that one is changing right this this one's going to be the debit so the insurance expense will be the debit in the adjust entry the credit will be most likely prepaid insurance right that's what we adjust for insurance on there um, office supplies expense that's going to be our debit right we're going to debit office supplies expense most likely the credit will be the actual supplies account we're adjusting for uh, inventory right adjustment at the end for our supply inventory uh, utilities expense right here this probably will be an accrued um, this could, this most likely could be an accrued expense so we could have like for example a miscellaneous uh, or a utilities uh, payable type expense that we're doing on here the utilities expense for sure will be a debit though so whatever the credit is it could be a, a payable it'll most likely be a payable of some type on that one there um, most likely not it probably won't be a prepaid we could prepay our utilities but this one I don't think is a prepaid our next problem here problem number seven so we're getting here close to the bottom so this one we are doing our so these are these last two I think are are some accrued adjustments that we're gonna be making here so these are some of accrued adjustments I think we're gonna be making here at year end so on this one on a we have a company provided services to customers that are expected to pay the company sometime in january following the company's year end so this one is going to be um <clears throat> whoops go here so these were accrued revenues or this one right here a is an accrued revenue so on this one what we do with accrued revenues is we have accounts receivable right that's in lieu of cash so we didn't get paid but we did do the did do the work and so we're gonna have here uh, like for example this could be like services earned for example or services revenue whatever that account is that's what it's gonna be so the accounts receivable is gonna be for four thousand bucks that'll be our debit and our credit over here will be four thousand bucks to services earned so that's what that one's going to look like and then later on um it, we'll get paid for it right and then we'll we'll collect the uh receivable and and be able to credit the receivable right now the re accounts receivable is a debit it's an asset uh, our next one here wages expense have been incurred but not paid so this is an accrued expense this is going to be uh wage wage expense and then uh, we're gonna have so that's gonna be our debit and then our payable wage payable it will be our credit so that'll be our credit and for whatever amounts those are it's three thousand I think on those okay so these again we've done some of these before so um, this one so C is gonna be uh, as a bank loan and we've got interest um, for the year ended the company will pay the interest uh, in January 2nd so we're gonna do our interest again that's interest interest expense oops there we go and we've got our interest payable so these are pretty these are pretty uh, straightforward. Interest expenses a debit, expenses are debits, payables are credits. Uh, so our D, let's go ahead here and do D. D is gonna be hired a firm to provide lawn services. Remember, we'll pay the December services. Uh, so, so this one's gonna be a, um, at, the, at the month end or the year end, we're going to be doing um a an expense so we're we're paying for services so it's going to be service whatever that services expense that we have here whatever that account is it's going to be an expense and then we've got a payable here at the end there we go that'll be d 
E. Um, we're going to do interest. This one's going to be a revenue. So we're going to have interest revenue coming in. Oh, whoops. Interest receivable. There we go. That's interest receivable is our debit. Our credit is interest revenue. There we go. And then F is going to be salary expense. Um, have been earned by supervisors not paid so again we're going to do salaries i think on this one it's going to be salary uh, expense and then of course our salary is payable so we're going to pay that on payday there we go okay so that one will help uh this is going to be our last one okay so we're expenses we experienced this the following events and so this one's going to be all about advances or unearned revenue and doing adjustments for those. So this is going to be July, right? Um, and what we're doing there. So the adjustments for the for the unearned revenue are going to happen as we earn. And so we're going to go through this and we're going to make transactions. So it's going to look like this. The, the debits and credits are going to look like this. Okay. So we're going to have a couple of accounts working here this is our unearned account so this is unearned revenue or unearned services right so that's a liability and then we're gonna actually have our uh, revenue work here our revenue at work here so once we earn it and once we do the work we'll get our revenue and then over here we also have cash that's working right so these are really our accounts that we're going to be working with so on July 1st we received forty one hundred dollars in cash in advance for performing work for for this uh, for this Vivian so that's going to be a debit to cash we're getting cash right so whenever we get cash it'll be debited our credit is going to be to unearned revenue we haven't done the work yet so that's going to be the very first one that's July 1st then we do this again for another person and we're going to receive another six thousand two hundred dollars and again unearned revenue is six thousand two hundred dollars so then on july 12th we complete the job for solana uh, vivian and so that means that that is four thousand one hundred dollars that we have earned four thousand one hundred dollars well, that's the connection there Okay, uh, Amina Jordan, we just got paid a little bit more cash. We just received more cash, but again, we haven't done the work. <clears throat> and so we're going to put that into unearned revenue, just like that, right? And then uh, we complete the work for Iris Haru. And so that's going to be $6,200. Let's extend this down here. There we go. So that'll be a debit to unearned. Once we do the work, it's a debit to unearned. And then we get to credit our revenue, uh, which is uh, $6,200. So these are all gonna be balanced, or they're gonna be um, totaled up for our balance here, right? At the very first, the 31st, none of the work for Jordan had been performed. So that's our balance, right? So this eight, $8,100, that's our balance currently in unearned revenue because that, whoops, that is the only job that we haven't done yet. So cash has grown quite a bit, um, yeah, for all that stuff, right? We can add all those up. And then our revenue has grown for those jobs that we actually did. So I think our revenue is 10300 from the revenue, from, the, from all that that we've created. So all of our debits and credits will balance out and then we'll be able to say, okay, that's that's going to be um, all the entries and the adjustments for unearned revenue. So hopefully this helps. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you watching. And uh, if you need any help, feel free to contact me.